much for joining us tonight for the Code Switch conversation. I am so delighted and honored to be joined by some amazing Black women in Canada who have all influenced my career in some way or have made space for me, encouraged me, made time for me. And I'm so, so thankful you are all here, ladies, with me today to create this special moment to have this Code Switch conversation series. I gotta take a moment for that actually just to see it all come together i have a lovely lovely camera crew that you can't see right now these hungry hungry ambitious young black film crew that is here helping us out black exec shout out to you shout yeah. out to what? nicole and a decor for the lovely so tablescape that you see for all of the decor that you see beautiful yes. for bringing the vision to life Shout out to Twist Caterings, uh, Latoya yes. Fagan, a black chef as well, who has catered this beautiful dinner for us. And without further ado, I'd like to thank each of you individually for being here tonight. Ladies, thank you for taking on my idea, for joining me on this boat. I know I emailed you frantically with some sort of PDF <laughs> about this boat, this yacht idea, but you believed in it and you joined me here tonight. So thank you. We believe Carlin, in you. Thank yeah. you. And we joined you tonight. Thank you. Yeah. We believe in thank you, you, Daniela. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Carlin. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Kika. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Shanae. And thank you, Tracy. So welcome. Yeah. And I want, no problem. Mm -hmm. And I want to give a cheers, cheers so we can kick off our conversation series tonight. Yes. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. 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 All the magic. To the cold oh, sweat. Amazing. So as the theme it. of my company, as you know, is called Code Switch, I couldn't start it off without having a question about code switching. <laughs> it's something that impacts many of us constantly throughout our careers. And I wanted to know, as code switching is nuanced and complex today, with black women finding themselves having to navigate many cultural contexts and linguistic styles, some people are actually very divided on the topic. Some people feel that, you know, it's a necessary adaptation for communication and others see it as a compromise for survival that undermines authenticity. So I want to know how has code switching impacted your professional journey and what role do you see it playing in our culture and in your cultural identity? I don't think there's anyone here that isn't a code switching aficionado. <laughs> and I think that's part of the reason why everyone here it has gotten to where they have gotten to. Mm -hmm. And I understand the controversy. I understand the side that says this you're selling out. If you like mm -hmm. you should always be able to show up as yourself. Mm -hmm. But the reality is we have grown up as the other. Mm -hmm. We have laser focused on how the center moves through the world. And we have learned that as a survival mechanism mm -hmm. to move through the world. I pass it down to my kids. So at this point, for me to ditch the code switching, it would not be possible because it's literally ingrained in me. It's a language that I can speak. It's mm -hmm. a way that I, it's an operating mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. And I see it as a superpower to a certain mm -hmm. extent. Mm -hmm. When I was on breakfast television this week and Tammy um, Sutherland went from Patti Dunn in the script <laughs> back to a news story, we were like, So good, yes. so, good. Yes. so good, so that good. Is, that yeah. is her expertise. Yeah. She yeah. can speak two languages. She can, mm -hmm. she can have her foot in two words. Worlds. So I don't see code switching as something that is going to go everywhere. It was an unfortunate circumstance of mm -hmm. our reality. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I love that. And if I can add to that, oh, Tracy, you know how much I admire you and adore you. And everything you said was just mm -hmm. a thousand percent. And it's actually tied to linguistic capital. I can't help it, but sometimes put on my coaching or my leadership facilitation hat, right? And that is tied to linguistic capital. So it's actually a strength. And that's what yeah. I love about the evolution of the whole conversation or the notion of code switching. Mm -hmm. We might have inherited it as a negative connotation, right? Because you do it because you have to fit in. And some people say, oh, well, you're not black enough or you're too black. Or there are all of those labels that comes with it. But what I love about it is exactly what you said. And that's why I'm excited about this conversation because we're at a point in history where we reclaimed it. Mm -hmm. So which means it's now a power. Mm -hmm. It's an mm -hmm. add to our cultural identity. And to be quite honest, not only is it a superpower, I find that it allows us to have conversation and see ourselves in a way that like no one else can get in. I don't know if any of you saw the tweet where this girl talked about, she was on the phone with another company. There was this one other black woman on there. And at the end, the black woman said, say less, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then she said, after she got off the call, she got all those messages in her Slack group where people, her white colleagues were like, 
Why would she want you to speak up? Why would she want you to speak up? That code switching, and that's what I love about it. It's a power, it's a secret language, it's mm. a part of our cultural identity that white supremacy can take away from us, that misogyny can take away from us, mm -hmm. where we now use it as a superpower, and I'm so excited about that. Thank you, Carolyn. I, I think mean, I just jump in. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think that it's important that we remember to switch off when we're with each other. Mm. Mm. That's right? right. Mm. Like, it's okay. You don't have to think that you're some bonquisha. <laughs> you, know? you know what I mean? Like, I think there's there, it's an opportunity, like, for me, my mom twists my lip and said, you're Canadian. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to speak this way mm -hmm. or else you're not going to get a job or et cetera, right? But that was her lived experience. Mm -hmm. But for me, I realized that code switching is music. It's like writing a song. And if I feel like writing a country song, I'm going to write a country song. Hey. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't hey. define me by my skin. Define me by the song. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So it's like, it's a genre. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think it, it's so important as I look around this table, if we want to be like, yo, Wagwan. Say wagwan. Well, well, if that's mm -hmm. if that's in your you know. You don't feel like you naturally do that though. Oh, it's so natural. I like that. automatically so natural. see another it's black natural. woman. I'm like yo, what, what, you know what, what I mean? right? Like it's, you just do it. Yeah, but I think it's also that we it's so important that we look at each other. We don't judge each other. Mm -hmm. I realize yeah. that you know what, we're in these spaces. Whatever language you need to you know, it's my Duolingo. You know, I got to Duolingo. <laughs> yes, it's the code switching. Yes. And don't I, judge. I think yeah. the transition now is a choice, right? Mm, and I think yes. that's what's so interesting yes. about the empowerment of it. I was doing it not realizing that fancy word of I was switching, right? I, it was an adaptal, it was survival. Mm -hmm. But now it's a choice. Like mm. I've created a business, I'm in certain rooms, and I decide whether I want to mm -hmm. camera on or camera off. You know what I mean? It's me that shows up and it's a, I think the important part is to make sure that we're not compromising our own ideals. Um, code switch all you need to do, but making sure that we're still authentic mm -hmm. and that we're telling our story and telling the story of the women that paved the way, our ancestors that paved the way for us to have this table, build this table. Thanks to Daniela, be here, yeah. uh, own the conversation. So I think it's important that we kind of look at it in like its duality in that sense. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that you said that it's still you. Because I don't actually feel like I switched that much. I feel like it's very organic. Mm -hmm. It's like I grew up in Scarborough. I grew up as a black girl. Yes. But I also went to an art academy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I have that duality already that's already built into me. So when I am walking in a room, I don't feel like I'm putting it's not I don't it doesn't feel fake. It doesn't feel put on. Mm -hmm. right. It's just like a natural switch. And I would never do that. I'm never going to be inauthentic. In like in those settings just because i can't it's just it does not come out of me naturally right so i think there's something to also feeling like because you said the word sellout mm -hmm. and i kind of sat it sat hard with me for a second because i was like i would never want somebody to think in these rooms that i'm selling out because mm -hmm. i'm actually still showing up as myself yeah you know what i mean yeah um and if somebody felt that like that projected that on me what does that say also about that other person, yeah. that other person of color. Well, it's that's yeah. like this girl showing up with her fancy much. words. Like, I don't, yeah, you know, but that's that how I talk. Who you are. That's how I talk, that's, right? That's someone that is not yeah. sort of accepting all of the multitudes that they contain right. and then projecting that onto right. you. Yeah. And I've, yeah. I've had that. I've gotten all the comments. I'm sure most of us have gotten yeah. that from people, but some folks yeah. don't understand that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that it's germane to who you are, yeah. and you do contain all these different yeah. people within you. We're faceted just because we're not yeah. black. Just because we're black, yes. doesn't mean yeah. like we're gonna come out and yeah. just speak one tone. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's right. a, it's a, it's, it's undermining to assume that that's a nat yeah. like that that's a given. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think yeah. I no, I was just gonna say that I think that you know it's a natural occurrence. Um, it's a naturally occurring outcome for the colonial process and the hybridity that our lives represent right yeah. um, in a way that the generation that um, that we are the children of mm -hmm. you know um, didn't have to do our, our uh, you know um, they were coming from home mm -hmm. and they were navigating the new space but many of us are of this land mm -hmm. and so it's a hybridity and the and this phrase code switch which has a, na a negative twist is interesting because I think what it's really describing is a naturally occurring outcome of hybridity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right? And, and then the other thing I was just gonna add is just that it's more than what we say. It's how we rep like present ourselves in the yeah. world, mm -hmm. right? And I think, you know, so it's, it's aesthetic, for yeah. example. Mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying? It's choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the that, colorism, right? 
right? It's yeah. not just the color of your skin. Right, yeah. right. There's other elements to yeah. it, right? Yeah. So yeah. Hairstyle. it's the hairstyle. Yeah. It's, it's the earring choice. But who actually yeah. gets to decide what code switching is, right? Well, exactly. Whose definition serves as the yeah. best for yeah. what code switching yeah. is? Right? I think we need to be critical of the concept and, right. and not, not, not that it's not not that it's not a thing. So to, yeah. first of all, legitimize the yeah. code switch, right? Mm -hmm. um, but but just to be critical of the criticism yeah. about it yeah. and switch it to, yeah. this is just a naturally occurring outcome. Yeah. We all have the capacity to go in and yeah. out yeah. Yeah. and yeah. all around. And you have to be very on point to do it. Yeah. I, will, I, I agree. will throw that in there. I agree. That's why I say it's a superpower. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to switch languages, codes, I mean, yeah. it doesn't get better than this. Tone. Yeah. Yeah. Tone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like your your source of knowledge, yeah. your references that you're leaning yeah. on. Yeah, like that is, you have to be very intelligent. To I do agree. That. I agree. And that's what yeah. we do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. I think it's also recognizing that Black people are not a monolith exactly. as well, and, right. and code switching will be mean def different things for different people. It's yeah. very mm -hmm. nuanced. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for me personally, when code switching feels like a job in and of itself, mm -hmm. that's when it like is a problem. So like me growing up or coming up or becoming a woman in the corporate world and having mm. to show up as something that was palatable to my mm. corporate colleagues, that was work. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the moment that I was able to like shed myself of that or like just, just drop that and just be able to show up as like Shanae, like yeah. you know, just be me, like throw in my little ad libs or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, then you don't have to worry about that job of like showing yeah. up of, of something that is acceptable yeah. and yeah. and then you can just focus on just being you and like so much more can come of that like there's so much synergy that's created yeah. that. yeah. like yes. so much um productivity and like just so many positive outcomes that come from that mm -hmm. so i think that it's only problematic when it's yeah it becomes a job and it's a task and it's yeah. like and it, it feels negative for you, but it's nuanced and different, I think, for everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. I agree. It's very if nuanced. I think about it, I my parents immigrated from Haiti to Montreal in the 70s, where not only did they have to adapt to coming to Montreal being Haitian, but also fitting into a Quebecois mm. atmosphere, society. So code switching was something that they had to do. So mm -hmm. growing up when my parents were like, you know, you're going to private school, don't speak in, you know, Quebecois, you're going to speak proper French, you know, in a sense that was ingrained in me at an early age. And so mm. when people might mm. perceive that I'm code switching, I'm like, this is how I was brought up mm -hmm. i just know that in different environments but it doesn't feel inauthentic so if i'm hearing what we're all saying is yeah. that as long as it feels authentic yeah. to who you are i guess you're not code switching in that sense because you're yeah. being true to yourself so, yeah. 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 And, and the reminder to give each other grace mm -hmm. because it, like shanae mentioned it means different things for different, different people. people and i think yeah. if we all remember that we've all been socialized in the white racial frame in terms of Again, like Kiki said, that inherited negative connotation. Yeah. What we've done is that we've, we've transformed it. Mm -hmm. We've owned it. We've yeah. said like, hey, just like, you know, you, with you changing a simple word, Julie, you said, mm -hmm. hey, mm -hmm. I'm taking this, this, you know, uh, Canadian national anthem and I'm mm -hmm. flipping it on its head, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right? You're, I'm changing it. Yeah. Like, like you have... You have decided, like, hmm. like, 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 changing the narrative. You're changing yeah. the narrative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. I, think, right? I think it's what's interesting about that is I had to navigate spaces where I had to let everyone know I wasn't, it wasn't an act of rebellion. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an act of being ghetto. It right. wasn't an act of being, you know what I mean? It's yes. like, it's very interesting with the code switching because sometimes mm. I find that because we, we are black, we can yeah. tend to play up being over black. If right. there's such a term, it's like, mm -hmm. you know what, well, this is, this is actually me. Mm. And I have friends of many walks of life, mm -hmm. of many races. Like this is Canada. Yeah. And that's what I can appreciate about being a born Canadian where it's like, Hey, if I'm hanging out with Chi Gang from Vietnam or Jyoti Patel from mm -hmm. Pakistan, or I'm hanging out with whomever, Johnny Papa Spiros from Greece, this is, these are my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like authentically, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So why do I have to hold on to what will be perceived as acceptable hood whatever yeah. you want to call it because that's also a code switch yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like a reverse code that's, switch. that's actually more so a code switch. you know what i mean yeah yeah. Yeah. So, yeah that was great thank you i think i have a follow-up question because i love this so much how have you learned to reclaim your voice and identity when it comes to code switching i mean i'll just i didn't lose my voice to begin with mm -hmm. i don't think there for me there was a, there wasn't anything to reclaim 
Mm-hmm. I think that sometimes there's this whole, like, even the other day, I was like, um, I don't have limiting beliefs. I don't have an inner saboteur. Like, I had to check myself because there's these terms thrown around from my own lived experience mm-hmm. that I actually don't, I, didn't, I don't have it. Mm-hmm. But I was starting to subscribe to it because it was like, oh, maybe there is this inner saboteur. Maybe there, I am, there are limiting beliefs, but there were because I was just raised a certain kind of way. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, oh, well, I actually don't have to identify as that because mm-hmm. it's not you. Yeah. So the, it's more so de- the declaration of who I am mm. more so than reclaiming anything that I lost for me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's I, I, I think I have to say, oh, I, again, going back to this authenticity piece and however you're um, framing of how you receive the information. It, like I'll use the example, you know, being a guest expert on the studio line and getting mm-hmm. to work with this amazing, the amazing Tracy Warren. <laughs> um, I'll never forget in one of the segments we were talking about um, um, the likability factor, and we talked about giving each other and giving women compliments. And I, I never think like, oh, do I have permission for me to speak black? I just do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I mean, when Tracy came on and she was wearing this blue, which was so vibrant on her, I was like, yes, dress, yes, blue, <laughs> right? And immediately, right? And, and 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 she just immediately also just falls into that authentic mm-hmm. moment. So I think it's, and then it creates this symbiosis mm-hmm. of receptivity that's. You don't have to check. You don't have to ask to get permission. Mm-hmm. Again, I think if you're open to the moment, you will know what's needed or, or what needs to flow. Yeah. I have to say that I don't even want to venture out into anything that isn't news because of this mm. heavy stereotype that we are entertainers and we are athletes Hello. and we are fluffy and light and comedians. Mm-hmm. That's right. So mm-hmm. that even informed my job choice. Yeah. So I was like, I'm staying in news. I'm staying in news. News is what I need to do. And when I was offered an opportunity to be in lifestyle, I rejected it. It was my husband that was like, yo, <laughs> there are opportunities here. Like, let's think about this. Let's think about what you can potentially, he's very much a forward thinker. Like he's probably my biggest cheerleader. And I was like, okay, let me think about it this way. And then when I started in lifestyle, it was very much, okay, I'm going to, they were asking me to be myself, but they didn't really know what they were asking for. So I was still in this very duplicitous role of, I need to stay in this job and nail this job. And I will put most of Tracy in the back burner and be the Tracy that they need me to be so that I can keep this because the community has told me this is important. It's crucial that I stay here. And so it was many years of that and many years of, okay, let me just like dip my toe into being a little bit more myself. And then let, let me just be a little bit more myself yeah. and let me try and bring my people in yeah. and create okay. space that's safe for them. But for me too, Yeah, you know, well, like yeah. I need that community part. in this space. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's been, it, it's been a very intentional reclamation and a lot of it has been age. A lot of it has been confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, 2020 really blew the lid off of things because I felt like I was very surreptitiously working on these goals and then they became public facing. Right. And so that really changed the narrative for me. You know, you thought I'm just going to do the news. I'm going to stay in the news. The other thing about just doing the news is that it's far safer than yes. than than tabling any of your opinions lest they be social justice, anti-racist, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, afrocentric, right? And I think the it's interesting the phrase code switch when we zero in on this idea of code. Like what's the code? And the code is you stay status quo. You do not you do not color outside of the lines. You definitely right. don't, mm-hmm. you know, ruffle the feathers and you don't tell the truth. Right. You particularly don't tell the truth about racism. So yes. the code that and so the code switch idea is not just again, it's not just like it is and isn't only, right? It's yes, orange, right? Yeah. Like yes. <laughs> more, please, right? Yeah. It's it's that, but it's also like switching up the narrative, yes. which yes. is the whole point yeah. of I think Daniela's a brilliant, you know, business, but switching up the narrative and let's be really clear about what we're switching it from. We're switching it from status quo, colonialism, racism, white supremacy. And and we're being made to to have to, to, we're being made to have to stay within the lines. And every time we don't, this is, this is the real thing, right? The truth is that when we code switch, Mm -hmm. 
like switch from that truth. code. Yes. When we tell the truth, yeah, the truth. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. There is there is something to pay for yeah. it. There's, there's a risk. Yeah. There is a risk. And I think that's part of it. Not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, not anymore. <laughs> but there's there's still still a Unfortunately, there's still a little bit of a price to pay, but I think that the um, there's a reward yeah. for it too. The risk yeah. is yeah. worth the, the reward. Agreed. Yeah. I think that we are surprisingly capable and our voices and our collective voice hey. is more p powerful beyond a lot of people's, you know, hey. ability to comprehend. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that there are many of us in this room are examples of that with, you know, you know, mm -hmm. Julie switching up the words to the national anthem mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. having uh, obviously d detractors, but way more people supporting yes. you and like mm -hmm. gunning for you. And, mm -hmm. and I think that now's the time to to take yeah, those risks yeah. um calculated yeah. risks uh -huh. and educated yeah. risks um but to take those risks yeah, yeah. and i'm gonna say yeah. some risk and not yeah. the voluntary yeah yeah that's your forced yeah. into yeah. it but yeah there's some risk in the so all i would say i, I think shanae is right and i think you know thank you for that um i think that we have to remember that there that some of the risks some of the results or the consequences yeah. right mm -hmm require us to stand up around and for each other mm -hmm. in a way that we weren't taught to. Mm -hmm. The conversation hey, I was yeah. having with the, with Carlin earlier, you know, that we weren't taught to love each other mm -hmm. as black women. Mm -hmm. We weren't taught to love black, Hello, right. period. Hey. So when you see a black person acting out, which is code mm -hmm. switching in the big mm -hmm. sense that we've been talking yeah. about, you know, we were taught, we've been taught to be quiet at, at lest we, you know, draw that negative attention to ourselves. Yeah, right. And we're not going to survive. We're not going to survive code switching. And I'm not, again, I'm not talking about, you know, some so of the little, like, the little yeah, narratives, yeah, between, yeah, the fun yeah, stuff, you know, yeah. I'm talking about really turning this thing upside down. Mm -hmm, yeah. We have to, I, like, I need you all. Yes, I need yes, you all, yes. you know, to stand up for me and with me. Yeah. when the consequences come in the yeah. good yeah. and the bad it's in called, the good and the bad a light yeah. shining on you and with the light out and it's That's right it's important to know like i'm in this journey of transition right now as i'm building my brand as i'm building who i am as i'm trying to figure out who i am and we're all on different journeys and we all as like let's say these companies are saying okay we're on this journey of equity we're on this journey of self-discovery you know of rediscovery of understanding our identity and like working with the old and the new and figuring out where our place is and i feel that some women that are on certain parts of their journey or maybe further along in understanding and that mm -hmm. comfort level need to have that same i guess empathy yeah, and, and understanding and grace, grace. grace. Yeah. for the women that are just trying okay you know what let me refer my black friend you know that is huge for someone okay. you know yeah. it might not be huge for me because i'm at this space in my journey of equity but it might be huge for someone else yeah. so it's it's understanding and having that grace like you said mm -hmm. um and being accepting where we all are at yeah. you know and yeah. giving the knowledge and giving the tidbits and giving the confidence hey nicole you should be charging this okay this I is guess. what's out there and me like okay i can do this i can say this so it's it's being that constant cheerleader okay even when we're on the downer that's you right. know the downer yeah. that's a big one too that yeah. downer because, is and you know why too because you said reclamation and the biggest part because you said what how did you start mm -hmm. reclaiming your identity mm -hmm. this is when i stopped caring about losing a gig mm -hmm. and losing money hmm. Hello. right Hello. and that happened when i had that's my big. own agency yeah. when you're in the corporate mm -hmm. world back to what tracy's saying you just don't have the choice like yeah. someone, i don't want that job i don't want that dynamic but if yeah, I start yeah. talking out like strongly about something that all the way people in the room are like, or whoever's not black are like, oh, yeah. she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, not the right client. Yeah. And that's, that was reclamation. That, that was like yeah. owning my identity and being like, nah, it's okay. It's okay to lose this one. Yeah. 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 I'll take that yeah. hit. I'll take that hit. And you really learn that when you branch off on your own, I think too. Yeah, yeah. What a beautiful okay. place to be. Yeah. It's very scary. Yeah, it is very scary. It's scary, but it comes back to what you said. It's full of rewards. Because when something else leaves, without fail, you probably say this too, without fail, when something else leaves, something else fails. Without fail. All the time. Cheers to that. Can we cheers to that? When something leaves, something bigger comes. <laughs> Amazing. That was a great segue to talk about Black sisterhood. I think Black sisterhood holds a lot of value to us and meaning to us for reasons that go beyond sometimes meaning. So they serve as a powerful source. I know for me, my girlfriends serve as the best support, 
safety, empathy, joy, and empowerment. How has the concept of sisterhood played a role in your life as a black woman and what does it mean to you personally? That's a loaded question. Because <laughs> I have a few sisters on this table that I know for a long, long time that have graciously just opened the door, asked for nothing in return. Shanae, when I asked, like, I DM'd her, I'm like, hey, I have this thing that I'm doing. I reply, you're like, girl, you're doing your thing. I'm there. Where do I need Aww. to show up? Like, Love just that. so many of those moments dispel those negative stereotypes that we can't work together. And there's work that we need to do within ourselves in order to be accepting. And we use this word grace, but giving each other grace on our low moments and our high moments, mm -hmm. because yeah. there's peaks and valleys, right? And it's the women that are riding with us in our peaks that remind us of our why. And we need to be pulled out of those um, those low moments in order to really thrive. And I say that I'm in this period of transition. I'm growing. I'm a new mom, oh, a wife. Cool. Lord, that's hard being a wife. It's hard <laughs> being a mother. Um, it's hard being the matriarch. It's hard having to do all of the things all of the time. Um, but without the not only the concept of sisterhood, but the actual execution of sisterhood, mm. um, I wouldn't be at this table today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know what really comes up for me from that? Belonging, too. Mm. Yeah. I, I grew, again, going to like an art school when I'm in Scarborough, and then like Lissa Monet was one of the, mm. like she was like in vocal or something in that school. And she was like three years older than me. And like when, if you go back to your high school days, grade nine did not hang out with grade 12. That was like a no-no, right? Niners. And I remember just seeing like, these, it was like a handful of black women and they were like 11, 12. And I'm like this young girl coming into the school and like, there's no other black folks. And then these girls just come right up to you. And they were just like, you're with us. Like Aww. another black girl, another black girl in this academy. And it was just like, you just pulled them out. And I think in my career, it was the same. Like when I, like as a creative director, you're in an agency or in a corporate world and you just bought another black girl and you're just like, yes. yes. And it was like this, this instant sense of belonging in a space that you didn't feel that you belonged always. Mm -hmm. And that's what, for me, that's what sister, cause it's like, I have sisterhood all over, but I would say that it comes in different cultures. I would not just mm. keep it to just black women where my sisterhood is like, like back to what you said, you got a Greek friend, you got a this friend. And that is literally my dynamic with my sisters, I think that are my core sisters. So I don't relate it to race, but I do relate race and that experience of black women. And like when I was spotted and I was just like, it was a, it was a it was a connection that you made and it was like a sense of I can I, I can do this. I feel like I belong here because I spotted another sister. We've come together and I started to then do that. Yeah. When mm -hmm. in the corporate sphere and in the agency yeah. world or when I was out and doing gigs and being like another sister, here like right away I started giving that over to somebody else and I think that that that, that part of belonging was, is instilled in me now mm -hmm. because of that. Well, do you feel I, it's I, a I sense of duty? Too. Do you feel that it's a sense of duty? Like, not duty. We need to do it? No, do I don't feel, feel like that I it's like, no. I just naturally do it. I, I, I naturally just, I gravitate that way. Love. It's duty coming from a place not, of love. It, yeah. Like, it's so effortless. It's like, because those oh, no, women I, didn't right? do it like from a sense do. of duty. They yeah. like literally spotted this little grade niner and been like, you're the only black girl in your grade. Mm -hmm. And like, it was an instant, like, you're mm -hmm. with us, right? I would, I would jump in because I wish we would take that high school, middle school, elementary school concept energy into being professionals. Mm -hmm. Because I feel mm -hmm. that, I feel emotional about it, that some of my biggest heartbreak came from black women. Same. Mm -hmm. And, same. you know, Ooh, same. I, I, I have to mm -hmm. just be totally, oh, yeah, totally absolutely. open about it. You know what yeah. I mean? The sense of competition, the mm -hmm. sense of, you know, jealousy, whatever it is. And so, like, I got this tattoo and, you know, you know why. And it's like this bridge and I had to make it a true effort even when i saw shanae we had something way back when and i was wondering if i hurt her feelings i said you know what? i'm sorry mm -hmm. if i hurt your feelings oh, even yeah. though she wasn't holding any any animosity i just yes. said you know if i hurt your feelings i'm sorry 
And so but you I know think... what, Jules? Hold my hand for a second. You know what? <laughs> it's so good to say that, to have yeah, that conversation. And for the record, she did not hurt me. <laughs> 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 I just, I just remember you her. Know, <laughs> and you're an yes. empath. Yeah. Yes. 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 As a woman, you Creative. stand up there yeah. and literally yeah. change the lyrics to the national hey. anthem. Hey. 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 And we're so grateful. Hey. And we're grateful for you. That's why she's so good you continue to scoop it up yeah. and send it out into the ether yeah, but you are a tender tender hearted soul yeah. and i very much mm -hmm. i see you yeah, in that sense of being the people that can hurt me the most are the people i love the, the most, most the closest yeah. to you the yeah. people who are the closest yeah. to me are my community yeah. yeah so when you get hurt when you're reaching out with all sincerity and you get hurt from one of us it hurts in a different way yes. it yeah. slices yes. And I, I very much, I, I, I feel that too. I felt that before. I felt that definitely in my industry. Mm -hmm. I had to look and find the people that weren't going to hurt me. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that's hard. And, and, that's hard. And, and Drew, I, I applaud you for your vulnerability. Nothing oh, yeah. Yeah. I about Thank you. Always do. As an immigrant, yeah. again, at the table, I like, don't have the Toronto story. I had to mm -hmm. learn it. And <laughs> I really love what you said about singling out black sisterhood. All sisterhood is important. I have some amazing mm -hmm. friends, black, white, mm -hmm. Asian, all the things. But I think it's so important to call out black sisterhood because yeah. of how black women are often vilified. Mm -hmm. And we need to make it known because a lot of black women don't have the experience a lot of us are talking about, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They've never experienced it. It breaks my heart when that happens. Mm -hmm. So when you said, and that's why I created Sister Talk, right? Mm -hmm. We only ended yes. up on Oprah's live class because I wanted to have this hard conversation. How do we stop hurting each other? Yeah. How do we stop operating from that, that mindset of coloniality where we keep lashing each other at the same tools that we inherited? It's time for us to evolve and to really lean into that matriarchal culture. Mm -hmm. And and all of you on the table have, have, have like in some way been a sister and showed up. Like I'll never forget when I was transitioning from corporate at the time, I don't even remember how we met, to be quite honest, because, but I'm like, it's the Julie Black, so you don't expect her to like, have time for you. But I remember when we met at Tironi, we yeah. met at Tironi, and I was telling him, like, I don't know if I should do it, because you know your Caribbean mm -hmm. mothers, right? Yeah, like, what's your pension? Like, She's like, you live in the bank and go where? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go on high, you, like, you know that yeah. thing. Yeah. So sometimes your family cannot be that first set of support, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they just yeah. don't get the vision. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'll never forget Julie, she was just starting off, you know, PBL, you know, Purpose Driven Life. I don't know how many of you know yes. about that book and Warren. Yes. And she and her best friend, you know, Anka Chi, they were going on that journey oh, and she yes. invited me in. Yeah. And I, I, like, I got the faith and courage because I yeah. borrowed and I leaned on wow. black faith and courage. Wow. That's beautiful. Like, like she helped me to make, and here we are six years later, yeah. right? And I'm still going. There are lots of sleepless nights. But because mm -hmm. of that, and even for you as well, I'll never forget, like the kids, yeah. you've, you've, you've yes. fought so hard. When I saw my, my photo in the Globe and Mail on the cover, front cover, in my short natural hair, shaved sides, and she fought for me to be on the cover. A wow. black immigrant a woman mm -hmm. who grew up in the bush, <laughs> shat in a pit toilet, mm -hmm. and here I am on the cover, and I'm in the centerfold of Globe and Mail. Yeah. And I know she had to fight to get it there. Yes. So to me, black sisterhood is so important. Mm -hmm. Like yes. when you saw me, you were like, car. Be an expert. I'm like an expert on what? <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure yeah. that out later. I'm like, yeah. So we see each other in such a beautiful light in our full humanity, and I think Black sisterhood needs to be seen, needs yeah. to be celebrated. And let me jump in. Needs to be invested into. Hey. Yeah. So I will say hey. this. I will say this flat out. You know, I'm the truth teller. At this well, all of us are truth tellers. But I'm gonna keep it real. Sure. Mm -hmm. The amount of mayhem for that Renaissance show, mm. outfits bought, yeah. tickets yeah. bought. Mm -hmm. Oh, Beyonce. Yeah. Ooh. Right. And I'm like. <laughs> I really hope the day will come no, where I see my sister uh, down my show. Yes! Doesn't matter if it's a $10 ticket. Yes, I don't care it. if it's in a bush somewhere. We need yeah. to show up for each other. People say, what is that? Yeah. Show up. Yeah. Show up. Just yeah. show up. Just show up. Well, I was, show up. Well, it's, funny, it's funny you say that because I was, I was sitting here thinking that we have to be so intentional to confront mm. ideas that we not only came up in, but that are informing our reality today and now right we yeah. have to confront we have to confront the scarcity yes. idea yes. for example <laughs> which is a capitalist driven so it's not going anywhere anytime soon we we, we are in capitalism mm -hmm. yeah. and so this idea of there can only be one yep. or there's not enough for us that right. we have to confront Valid. that we have to nurture and create yep. you know the the interest to to go beyond it it's not just going to come naturally Absolutely. right and, and i think we can't be i think we, we we run a risk of being so personally critical again right mm -hmm. 
we're gaslighting ourselves mm -hmm. if if we if we don't acknowledge that scarcity is the, as just as an example is the construct in which we work yes like right. you go into corporate yes. anything and even as consultants we are in the scarcity model of the larger system like we're, mm. we're not escaping that it is a conscious choice of deliverance and yeah. code switching for real yeah. exactly. to, to to do this kind of system and, thing and, and, anyway oh, yeah. Yeah. and we have to yeah. do it yeah. through demonstration Preach. like yes. like, like the women on this table like Preach. i know if i call Tr tracy would literally uber me clothes if i need it yeah if i call yeah. julie i said julie i need and we have to hire each other yeah like yes. we have to yeah. bring Hello. each other into yeah. the you dress me on the, each other. Yeah. Hello. Right? Yeah. Can, can oh, I just sure. say can I just say something to that too? Sorry, I forgot my point. It's okay. these guys. It's the back and out. It's the back and out. It's the back and out in the back. <laughs> and it was like the I actually the feel the same way about each of you when I think about Black Sisterhood. And Julie, you said earlier we're not BFFs, but we happen to be on this boat, all connected somehow yeah. through these experiences, actually. and are genuinely enjoying each other's presence. And That's I feel true. The same yeah. way about all of you. None of you, my BFF is over there. She's not at the table, but <laughs> she here. doesn't even do she's this. Here. She's showing up, she's doing the thing. Oh, but nice. all of you, whether we talk frequently or not, have showed up uh, on an else. idea, have made time for me on your personal time, mm -hmm. and have met me at moments where you didn't even know that I needed that extra push or that wow. affirmation or that wow. encouragement to I'm keep sure going. And I think that's what we do for each other yes. within Black Sisterhood. Yes. We don't know how meaningful these little moments yeah. or those Huge. little things can be to someone. You yeah. Know? yeah. So thank you. Big again. Time. Yeah. Thank segue you. Big time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cookies. The last thing I was just going to say about sisterhood is just that for me, it's a shorthand. Like I, for me, it's now we're going to have a shorthand and I'm going to instantly be transported into a more comfortable space because we're going to have a shorthand. So now if I'm going to explain something to you that happened at work, you're going to understand that race and gender is a part of it. Right. Intersectionality. Without me having to explain it to you, there is a shorthand immediately and that leads to a certain level of comfort that I think is unmatched. Yes. I agree. I concur. No long I talking. Let's <laughs> <laughs> move us on to the other one. I know we're eating. No long talking. <laughs> How's the food, ladies? So being a black woman in Canada presents a unique set of experiences that can be shaped by various intersectionalities, including race, gender, and the cultural and social dynamics of Canadian society. From navigating systemic inequalities, inequities to forging a sense of identity and belonging. How does being a black woman in Canada shape your experiences and interactions within your spheres and social settings? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's actually, it's, it's so interesting being raised like in an area that we deemed as at risk, Jane Finch community, uh, which is very multicultural, go figure. Mm -hmm. um, but in this, in being a black woman in entertainment i didn't feel my blackness hey. i didn't feel i feel like people really bought into julie black mm -hmm. so it wasn't until i saw my peers other artists nelly Furtado, shania mm -hmm. twain whomever you know getting other opportunities that i realized oh snap i think i might be i think i might be on a different bus here yeah. i might be on a different <laughs> they might be a di no for real yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I guess without overthinking it strategically, it was important for me to be truly Julie. Yeah. Truly Julie is what was my is my safe haven. Mm -hmm. um, it's really been my protection. Mm -hmm. It's been um, an area where I can be bold and courageous and truth telling. And lately, though, it's been important for me to be. There's three S's that I subscribe to. I need to feel safe. I need to feel seen. I need to be able to be soft. Yes. Yes. Safe, and soft. Safe, yes. soft. That's amazing. Right? And this is softness that. now. Yeah. yeah. That's the homework. Yes. Because that's why yeah. I can say being a black woman in Canada, there was like a callus that I didn't realize, an armor that I didn't realize was actually on me. On me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a beautiful time in life where you know, you shared earlier, we were like, you know what? Well, hey, if you don't get the gig, if you pass up on it, you pass up on it. <laughs> it's just it's this yeah. radical faith. Not religion. It's a Faith. radical belief Faith. system that no different than a computer. You need a system reset. 
yes. you need to re you need to update the software. Yes. And I think that some of us need to spend time yeah. figuring out that software yeah. that needs to be reset and, yes. and updated. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and if I can add to this, yeah. just be yeah. be mindful that the software is not rooted in the white racial frame. Yeah. Right? The software needs to be rooted in the Afrocentric system, exactly. the ancestral wisdom systems. Like we have to know where we're getting our culture like that because mm. I grew up we were downloading that it. Christopher Columbus discovered Seleucia. Mm -hmm. This fucker didn't discover shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? What they did was they stole, they, they pillaged, mm -hmm. they exploited, right? But imagine repeating this as part of your culture like that. You're not knowing that you're literally betraying the very essence of who you are. So mm -hmm. I find growing up as a black, I'm an immigrant, right? I moved here from the Caribbean, from Seleucia. So for me, I'm, I'm, I learned I was black when I moved here. Right, because in Saint yeah. Lucia, yeah. everybody's black. black. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I see, kind of, I kind of can relate to what you're talking about mm -hmm. from that perspective, because it's only when I moved here I learned about DI yeah, and I'm in a category, and I'm like, oh, oh right. Well, I guess I'm gonna learn this then, yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it has also really shown me, or actually allowed me to deepen my appreciation for my culture, my ancestral heritage. I was born in the one of the islands that was named after women. The only feminine act in the Caribbean, and I can't wait to take all of you be there. Hello, right? So special. it deepens St. Lucia's. It deepens my. I haven't been. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been. I can't it's wait to go. It's special. It's special. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It feels like God showed up. No, I haven't been. Okay. Yeah. 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 I want to go. It really feels like God showed up. Yeah. 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 I'm waiting for Carlin's invite. Charles, 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 Right, so for me, again, all of this, I was teased for my accent when I moved here. So there's a lot of cultural mm. racism and cultural trauma. Yeah. Right? right, forget race, forget gender, but just culture. Right? Yeah, right. right. And Part. to me, that informed, but it also informs my practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But if anything, the greatest thing I'm finding joy around is partnering with other black women, other indigenous women, other women of color, because I think <coughs> the opportunity I have to change the narrative through action. Like to me, it's it's unprecedented and it's such yeah. an honor to be able to love on another black woman or to be a representative of safety for another black woman mm -hmm. and to let another woman feel seen because of my words and my language. Mm -hmm. And I feel so I feel so honored that every woman. I mean, I talk to Tracy a lot about that because she worked so hard. In addition to all the racial and cultural trauma and racism you get from people, you still work so hard to bring black women and women of color and other non-binary identities on the show, mm -hmm. right? You carry the whole show on your back. Yeah. So to me, if I have a chance to talk about Tracy or see so Tracy, good. I have to pour love into her yeah. because yeah. her men that are what she's do. doing. And you do, on the front line. She's so on the front line. Right, she's yeah. on the front line, yeah. right? Yeah. That's our bloodline, so yeah. you gotta show up. Right. So I feel yeah, like I feel like to be a black woman. controls you. Yeah. Media okay. controls the mind. Right. So that's why for me, that's yeah. a very, so important. very important place to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Mind yeah. Is so important. Yeah, yeah. I, was just, I was just gonna say like I feel like to be a black woman in Canada, well, to be a black person in Canada, I'll start with that. You know, is to be living in an in the ultimate. Um, um, it's like it's like Paradise. cosplay. Yeah, it, it's 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 so not real in the sense that you know. So for example, so much core to the Canadian identity is not is to not be the U.S. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when you yeah. uh, you know most a lot of Canadians yeah. will say that, and yeah. it's like, well, what do you mean? Well, we don't have the same history of racism. Yeah. Or we yeah. didn't have slavery. I mean, these are simply. Have, uh, hello, this is, this is this is this is just. We had it's just absolutely. Came here, actually, it, yeah. Well, well, we and so they'll. And so they'll talk about the Underground Railroad, but the Underground Railroad is 30 years of our of our country's history. Yes. Yeah. Slavery was over 200 years. Yeah. Oh. You know, so to be black in Canada is to live in this denial, this reconstruction denial. of mm -hmm. of of the, the the history of the country, right? Yeah. And to sort of be written out, um, and and not just we are written out because we are completely erased from the national narrative, but to be but to be gaslit to the nth power. Yeah. And the problem with that yeah. erasure of the you know, systemic oppression and systemic anti-blackness is that where we are today is a result of it. And, and yeah. if we don't name that it was so yeah. in the beginning that there was exactly. anti-black racism that yeah. was legislated and, and yeah. systematized, et cetera, then, then our experience doesn't make sense collectively. A you lot. see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, yeah, so, and so you know, to, be, to be a, now, so to choose to be a black woman, to define that, like to sit here at this table and you know, you know I, I have to be prepared to confront that, to redefine that, right? And again, so this is where the code switch thing comes in because the code is, mm -hmm. right? 
agree that we didn't have these issues, yeah. agree that everything was yeah. fine historically, yeah, right. agree that it's safe to be, yeah. you know, shrouded in whiteness, agree, agree, agree. And when you disagree, right, that you're is- You're canceled. You're yeah. canceled yeah. and it's harsh yeah. Yeah. and it's real. Yeah. So I think we got to wrap it up. Yes, Thank you car. so Lots much everybody got a car. Let for attending the yes. first Code yes. Switch yes. conversation yes. series. It was a pleasure yes. to host yes. you on the I'm yacht. Thank you to Black Execs. Thank you, N.A. Decor. Uh, thank you to Twist Caterings and everyone for joining us on the boat. Have a great evening. Thank you.